Hi everyone, it's me again. So if you haven't heard about me before, my name is Marilyn Quintana. I'm a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. And today we are going to talk about the Rural Northern Pilot Program. But before we jump into the new video, please subscribe to our channel, click on the little bell right below so you can receive weekly notifications of our new videos and feel free to leave us a comment with ideas or questions, we'll be very happy to reply to you. So let's start, new program, program available for a pilot project for two years, the name is Rural Northern pilot program and it is a very very great program with great eligibility requirements with few cities participating in the program so i will start talking about the cities we have five cities participating in ontario two cities participating in bc two in manitoba one in saskatchewan and one in alberta check out the names of the participating cities in ontario we have north bay sudbury timmins South St. Marie and Thunder Bay. In Manitoba, we have Brandon and Altona. In Saskatchewan, we have Moose Jaw. In Alberta, we have Clark's Home. And in BC, we have Vernon and West Kootenai that are composed by a uh, few cities together, Trail, Castaglar, Hosland, and Nelson. To qualify, you have two options. One, have a job offer from an employer here. Two, study here in the participating city in a program of at least two years, so you can qualify upon graduation. For the first option, which is obtaining a job offer, in order to assist you to find that option, every city is creating a specific website with a list of employers, so you can apply for the positions through that website. We are going to leave down below here the information that contains the uh, pages that are already available uh, for each city so you can preview specific community requirements and also the list of employers that are participating in the program. Besides having the job offer, there is also additional requirements that you must consider. For example, having one year of related experience in the position that you were able to obtain a job offer, for education, you must have at least comparable to high school level, so you can have the high school from your home country, you just need to do an assessment to confirm that it's equivalent to a high school in Canada. You are not required to present, for example, a bachelor degree, just high school, it is enough to comply with the requirements. And for languages, we have three tiers. If you are coming for a position that's entry-level position, what we call NOC C or D, you are just required to present CLB4. CLB4, guys, is equivalent to lower intermediate level, so it's very, very easy to have this um, level. If you studied once in your life, you have to just to catch up a little bit and probably you'll be enough to have the qu qualifications required. If we're coming for a knock B position, which is usually a technical position, can be in construction, can be a supervisor position, for example, you are required to have CLB5. It's a little bit higher, it's like an intermediate level. Usually people that have studied English, even that long time ago, can brush it up and obtain the level 5 easily, without many concerns. And only if you have a job offer, knock 0 or knock A, then you are required to have a CLB6. Just for you guys to have an idea, CLB6 on IELTS, it is equivalent to 5.5. So it is not a, a very difficult level as well. So CLB5 is obtaining between 4.5 and 5 in IELTS. CLB6 is equivalent to 5.5 in IELTS, right? And CLB4, it is obtaining uh, the score 4 in the IELTS exam. So it's not like very difficult, which is great. And if you chose to come to Canada and study here, you can waive the requirement of having one year of related experience. So once you graduated here, 
in a post-secondary education program of at least two years and you have lived in that community already, you have to comply with all the other requirements, but you don't need to comply with the work experience requirement. In certain ways, it's a way to make sure that once you study in Canada, you are going to be able to transition to permanent residency because the program requirements are very accessible, which means it is very unlikely that you cannot obtain the success that you require. It is also important to say that for both the job offer stream or the international graduate stream, you must present settlement funds, meaning you must present that you have enough money to support your family according to the number of family members in your family. For example, single, it is about 13,000, a couple is about 16,000, and for a couple with one child would be close to 19,000, and then increases according to the number of family members in your family, okay? This money can be available even back home, as long as we can present the conversion rate and show that the equivalent amount in Canadian dollars would be according to the requirements of the program. Needless to say, the program was created to develop these communities, so they expect more people to live there, to make a living there, and because of that, you must present your intention to live in that community. Of course, once you have a job or if you're studying, you are uh, somehow already presenting ties to that city, but in our immigration application, it is important to also demonstrate that you wanted to stay there, you want to prosper there, you want to remain there. Does not mean you cannot move out. You can. You always have the freedom to go somewhere else. It's not a problem. However, your intention at the time of application must show that you have the intention to reside there. It is very important to say that the communities may present some specific requirements for you to participate and be eligible to apply in the program. So once you choose the city, it is very important to observe the specific community requirements as well. In my opinion, the Rural Northern Pilot Program, it is a great option because it is an additional pathway for you to pursue. So if you are considering, for example, coming to BC, you can pursue the federal program, you can still pursue the provincial program, but now if you go to Vernon, for example, that's one of the cities participating, you can also consider one more option to apply, which is the Rural Northern Pilot Program. So once you increase the options, the chances of success, meaning the chances of transitioning to permanent residency, it is higher, and that's why it's so great to share this good news because we are helping Canada to prosper when we bring people to smaller cities and people also have more opportunities to achieve their goals. One very important thing that I want to say is that when we say rural area or cities participating in the rural program, a lot of people get scared thinking that, oh my God, the city is super small or doesn't have infrastructure, or I'm going to live in a farm, for example. Guys, in Canada, it is not like that. If you go to Vernon, for example, a city that I'm glad to know with my own eyes, it is a city that has a lot of infrastructure. For example, they have hospitals, supermarkets available, like uh, big stores. You can have everything that you need very close by. It's not like in some countries that when you talk about the, the village or the rural area, you have limited access to a lot of good services and sometimes you have to travel a few hours by car or by any other means to reach to certain things. Here in Canada, it's not like that. So you can secure that these cities also have a lot of good infrastructure for you to live with your family. So don't worry about it, okay? So that's all for today. I hope you guys liked this video and has helped you to make your decision to come to Canada and eventually helped you to nail down a few other options that you can consider. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comment below with your idea, with your suggestion for a new video or even sharing your updates about your own specific plan and we'll be happy to assist you with your questions and even bring into a new video maybe next week. Okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys like it and I see you next time. Bye!